Hello, hello everyone. It's Thanksgiving week. So today I'm going to talk to you about surviving Thanksgiving week. Um, this is Michelle Howe. I hope you stay with me through the next 10-15 minutes. This isn't going to take long. So, you know, what is it that's um, great about Thanksgiving? Why do we have Thanksgiving? It's so we can be reminded to be thankful for the things that are in our lives, the food, the people. I know some of the people maybe you don't aren't the greatest things in the world, but thankful for what we have in our life. Focus on thankful, all right? For, for focus on what you have in your life that you're thankful for. And yeah, there could be some characters that you're not so thankful for. But let's keep that aside for now because who they are, what they are, how they impact you is going to be a moot point the more you develop an understanding of how to keep yourself happy and centered and not go down, slide down, you know, dip into negativity, pain, heavy emotions that you don't want to deal with, that aren't yours, right? Um, so some people trigger us and that brings out everything that we try so very hard to hide and to avoid in our life. And most of the time we will blame them for the way that they are because they bring out that side of us or we feel their pain or unease. So if you're an empath and you're watching this, most likely you're an empath, otherwise you would not be watching this. If you don't know what an empath is, they are the heart-centered person, they're that intuitive person that knows how you really feel, that can discern, it's not, discern's not the right word, that, can, that notices the subtle shifts in a person, of whether that person is happy or sad, whether they're lying, whether they're hiding something, um, the intention behind something, they are sensing energy. They are sensing people. They are sensing conversations. And they they don't always understand why things, the words that come out of their mouth, out of someone's mouth, is not always really descriptive of what's actually going on with the person. So a lot of times when you're an empath, you may not understand why you feel certain ways. There isn't like this, you know, flashing neon light that said, yes, you're correct, yes, you're right. You know, this is coming from here or there. So a lot of this is discerning how you navigate the world and how you interact with the energies around you and how you don't interact with the energies around you, most importantly. A lot of times, most of us have automatically behaved, learned behaviors, gained beliefs because we've been hurt and our energy is just as important as the energy of the people around us. So in order to survive this week, and we're going to move into Christmas, right? So we're surrounded by relatives, people that we love, people that know how to push our buttons if they want to, people that you may or may not have um, judgments about or feel emotionally um, dejected, rejected, hurt from past behaviors and situations, okay? So, all that being equal, meaning you don't, you know, you're going to show up. You're going to show up. Ideally, you don't show up with all that baggage. Ideally, you show up with the idea that you're going to have a positive, amazing day. That you're going to enjoy the day, enjoy the people, see the best of that person without exposing yourself too much to the negative of that person. How do you not expose yourself too much to the negative? You simply focus on the good part of that person. And you stay centered. So what do you got to remember? Stay centered. Stay behind your heart. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means you are in you. 
you're not scoping them out and tuning into their mental or their physical or their emotional. You are in you and your intention is to stay in you right behind your heart. That's where you stay. And you're watching the world and you're smiling because you feel the love that's in you. And you know you want to have an upbeat, fun time. So you're going to show up with that. You're going to wear that. You're going to hold on to that. And if you see anything else happening around you, you don't go dance with that too and go dance with the other thing too. You stay where you are. Now, subtle energy, right? It takes an awareness. It takes an intention. It takes the, that reality of, I am an empath. I need to be really clear energetically where I end and somebody else begins. When I walk into a situation with my heart beaming, my heart is full I'm coming in from a place of strength. I'm loving. I'm appreciating. I'm upbeat. I'm grounded. I'm not daydreaming. I'm grounded. My feet are on the floor. My seat is in the, you know, I'm sitting in my seat. This is where I am. And you hold on to that. Now, a lot of us, Love our crystals, and that's beautiful. Wear your crystals. But there is that awareness of energy that you need to understand as an empath. Where you end and they begin. And if you're feeling like you're being invaded, you're, you are not strong enough in that awareness of your energy. So what can you do with that? You start really taking care and strengthening the energy that you are. You're not going to develop that all overnight. It takes some time and dedication and, and priority, but you get there. You get there. The empath is gifted because the empath can feel the world as one. But when you feel the world as one, you're not going to like all the feelings, my friends. You're not going to like all that. So if nobody told you before, you're going to pull back, create that boundary between them and you. Get to know who you are, which is probably one of the biggest things empaths need to know. Who you are. And how do you handle negativity that comes your way? Well, as you develop more and more, that negativity is powerless against you. Certainly, if there are situations and people that you really don't feel comfortable with, that really jar you, that really you're not going to have a good time with, don't go. Don't go. What they think is none of your business. So, one last thing to remember. You're not gathering with people to assess them, to fix them, to argue with them. You're not there to defend yourself. You're not there to explain yourself. And the moment you start feeling uncomfortable, what you need to do is relax your heart. Deep breath, relax your heart. Stay right back there where your heart is. Right behind your heart. Because the moment you get tight and nervous and you feel like you've been, you're being attacked and you need to say something back, it just goes downhill from there. That's where you don't want to go. And if you truly are being attacked, you know, so it's one thing to be around people whose vibrations are different than your own, but they're good people and they have their own stuff and they have their own thoughts and they're passionate about this or they're passionate about that. That's one thing, okay? You can certainly be in that space with that as long as you have your boundaries. Boundaries for you, <laughs> for you, all right? But if you're in a group or gathering where it's volatile 
and um, nasty in some way, demeaning in other ways, you do not need to be there. That's not healthy. That is toxic. Okay? So either you learn to stay where you're at, you see the toxicity around you, and you're still beaming strong who you are, or that toxicity is too much for you, and there's no, there's no apology to stepping back. There's nothing wrong with stepping back. Step back and away from people who are toxic in your life. Now, we could put all kinds of people in this category of toxic, right? People are just regular people. When you're empathic, when you're an empath, you look at life a little deeper. And because you can feel the jarring of emotion and energy, heavy, heavier, jarring to you, It's hard to say, oh yeah, just be yourself and you're not impacting me. But where we need to get is when we love, we allow another person to be who they are. As long as they're not toxic, truly toxic to us. Every person you know is imperfect, including you. You have your own triggers, you have your own sadness, you have the things that you have not been able to truly process or grasp, you have things that you're passionate about. So respecting others for their humanity allows you to respect yourself for your humanity. And just like others, yeah, they have a choice about how they behave and what they think, but a lot of times this stuff is just so automatic. We all get stuff that's important to us that kind of throws us off. You know, so being centered is like the opposite of that. Being centered is being you, being calm, being grounded, knowing where you stand, leveling out the emotions and the, and the thoughts in a positive direction in a very real and grounded way, practical way of engaging with the world. So the world isn't all good or all bad. People aren't all good or all bad. People come in all kinds of shades of gray. And some people are very accepting and loving and kind. And other people have been hurt so they don't trust. They're cynical, they're sarcastic. And maybe they even go as far as being narcissistic, self-centered. They don't care about anybody else. But you know what? That's okay. As long as they're not hurting you, let another person be who they are. You have a choice of how close you get to people. And mind you, a lot of times, if you're having struggles with people that are in your family, you're not going to be around them all day. You might be around them for an hour or two. All right? Try to look for the best parts of that person and try to just relax. Relax, be yourself, let the energy flow through you. Let love be the primary ingredient in how you come across. And it's not love that's ooing and goozing and upset. It's not drama. It's a very strong, stable presence that is you. Okay. I hope you got something from this. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And until next time, stay healthy.